Every coach down in Coachville liked Christmas a lot but the pep who lived just outside Coachville did not. The pep hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season for to take attention from football was treason he had lived in some countries whose greatest mystic you is to each year declare a midwinter break in this nation the program it never abetted but good cheer and big lunches pep never had rated it wasn't by chance that last year, so downhearted he declared that the process of goodbye has started he told football writers, of this I am sure, my career will last just a year or two more. Now a year it had passed and despite some achievements this season for him was the worst of bereavements he stood there on Christmas Eve, hating the coaches who to him were no better than Christmas Eve zero roaches for he knew every coach down in Coachville beneath was busy now, hanging a mistletoe wreath and plotting, as sure as one breathes and exhales to improve their poor teams in the January sales then he growled, with his pep fingers constantly drumming, I must find some way to stop Christmas from coming. Then he got an idea. An awful idea, the pep got a wonderful, awful idea. So to give their morale the most terrible bushwhack he called up his old friend Khaldun al-Mubarak I know how to destroy these most horrible men I will sign up not for one more year but ten, my rivals will surely all choke on their turkey if they knew I would be here for longer than Fergie. And before the coach's last cracker had gone crack he'd verbally agreed a new 20-year contract he'd stay there forever, he'd stay there for sure till Jose Morinho Morinho no more till the dreadful and ghastly Antonio Conte said uh oh, uh oh, oh no, no, like be once when the newspapers carried this news, it was true that every coach down in Coachville cried boohoo. And what happened then? Well, in Coachville, they say that Pep's head it grew three more sizes that day but perhaps nobody should mind what he said for next year he'll say something quite different instead. Join Simon Benton from 8pm GMT for hot MBM coverage of Everton 3-0 Swansea City. We always judge sports people, and footballers in particular, by the games they play, what trophies they win. But in the end we're all judged as people and what was clear from the tributes across the game was the respect for Hugo as a person, his nature, his humility, and his values. I wish I'd had the chance to sit and have a beer with him and tell him what I thought of him. His death made me think about how often, if ever, we let people know that we love and respect them. I would have loved the opportunity to tell him in his tribute to the late Hugo Ahiagu, England manager Gareth Southgate delivers some beautifully selected words. We go behind the scenes on Birmingham Derby Day with fans and the police. Producing The Guardian's thoughtful, in-depth journalism the stuff not normally found in this email, obviously, is expensive, but supporting us isn't. If you value our journalism, please support us by making a one-off or recurring contribution. I'm asking questions about commentators' cliché of the year.